Hi, hi. It is a pleasure to be here. And thank you to the organizers uh, for having me. I know there are people who are watching. I can't see you, but I know there are thousands of you who are currently watching me. Uh, today, we're going to talk about our brains. And actually, what I'm going to do is, listen carefully, I'm going to change your brains. Okay? So don't worry, it's going to be for for sure. Uh, I'm going to attempt to do this, but in order to, for this to work, I would ask you, of course, you're free to not do it, but if you do it, it would be better for you. If you stand up in front of your desk or whatever, whenever you are, to stand up and maybe do a bit of stretching. Why? Because this is going to bring some oxygen in your body, deep, uh, uh, breathe deeply. Uh, so you need more oxygen in your body so I can actually change your brain today. All right. So if you're doing this, great for you. If you're not doing this, maybe you can try it later. But anyway, think about for a second for your childhood when you were a small kid. Uh, I bet you were playing and there were times when you were hitting maybe your head. Well, I was a very wild child when I was a child and I was hitting my head with plenty <laughs> in different uh, places and my grandmother she uh, was a biologist and she was teaching in uh, the local high school she was always telling me that I need to be more careful I need to be super careful to not hit my head uh, because my brain cells are dying every time I hit my head and when a brain cell dies they are never resurrected. Uh, the brain cannot produce new neurons. Neurons, And that was true like 35 years ago. People were believing this. And maybe you are believing this as well. Actually, it wasn't uh, like 25-ish years ago since people believed that our brain was developing till we are uh, hitting age of 25 or something and then our brains gradually decay over time and they become uh, less and less powerful uh, less and less uh, uh, capable to to change to to learn new things and basically uh, this is what this what this was was what was believed but neuroscience recent uh, researches proved this wrong Actually, our brains are constantly changing. They are constantly reforming, reorganizing, uh, creating new connections, uh, etc. This is pro this process is called neuroplasticity. So basically, our brains are plastic. They're not just fixed uh, in a certain state. Not just that, but it was recently proven that our brains in a very special place called hippocampus, can produce new brain cells, new neurons, right? That means my grandmother wasn't right when she was telling me that uh, our brains are not capable to produce new brain cells. And there are certain things that you can do in order to increase the number of those newly born neural cells. And because they, they are created, but many of those are dying. So you need to do some stuff to keep them alive and be incorporated in your brain structure. So there are certain things you can do practically. And I'm going to tell you this today. So as you can see, our brains are really agile. They are flexible. They are changing constantly. And it is very much related and in line with what we call the agile, let me just check the slide, the agile mindset or the growth mindset. And I trust many of you know, but the opposite of growth mindset is the fixed mindset, which is basically the belief that we are born with uh, specific abilities, uh, with the specific capabilities. And basically we have certain uh, talents and we hit some maximum of our talents and capabilities and we are not able to to improve on this. And there are certain people who are better than us in certain areas, and we cannot cannot be like them. We cannot uh, learn new stuff, etc. Growth mindset, on the other hand, is the opposite belief that we actually 
can learn, we can improve over time. This is what we call continuous improvement. And basically, we can adopt and have new capabilities and new, uh, basically, things we can do. All right. So today, I'm going to talk about neuroscience, practical neuroscience. And I'm going to talk about psychology a bit. And we're going to make the connection with the agile ways of working, agile environments. My name is Bogoy Bogdanov, and today I'm going to give you a toolbox that you are going to use, hopefully right away. This is my goal, as I mentioned earlier in, my, in the beginning. I'm going to change your brain. And uh, the way I'm going to do it is by teaching you stuff. So the moment you learn something new, this information gets imprinted in your brains, and this is actually what changes your brain. Good stuff. Okay, let's go to the meat of the presentation. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Boggy. Uh, Bogo is my full name, but everybody calls me Boggy. It's easier to pronounce, easier to remember. I'm coming from Bulgaria. And actually, I'm coming from Bulgaria from a small town uh, near the seaside. It's called Dobrich. What's fun stuff about me? I love playing tennis when I can and have the time. It's also very re much related to the brain function and how your brain actually can produce more neurons by ex exercising and having uh, good cardia cardio uh, uh, training. What I also like is to go skiing in the Alps. And also I have a brother and we are actually working together. He's also an agile coach like me. And we are uh, the founders of our own company, Agile Pool. I'm going to tell you uh, in a bit about it. So we love uh, public speaking, doing trainings. Uh, we love uh, being in conferences like this one. Uh, and of course, seeing people in person, not at home all the time. So hopefully maybe next year I'm going to be there and uh, see you guys. Uh, so we work with companies and we do workshops. We teach people how to uh, improve their process uh, practically. And I'm also a father of a beautiful baby girl. The boring stuff about me is that I'm a CEO of a company, as I mentioned, Agile Pool. I have more than 12 years of experience working in an agile environment. Uh, I'm coming from IT myself, so I was a programmer once. Uh, and uh, since 2016, I'm running my own business. And our business is to help companies to be like Google, which means to be modern, to be effective, to work um, uh, in a better way. Uh, so Google is like a benchmark for a modern organization. And we are implementing this agile mindset, this neuroscience and psychological tips and tricks I'm going to mention in real environment. So I'm going to very much speak from experience. I'm not a psychologist myself. Uh, everything I'm going to share with you is based on my own research and my and based on my own uh, experience. Good stuff. And also, we are just starting having a podcast called Management Nightmares. We have a couple of episodes. Those are in Bulgarian, but stay tuned. Episodes in English are coming soon. All right, enough about me. Now let's go to the uh, real stuff. I trust many of you have seen this. Individuals and interactions should be over process and tools. So this is one of the core values, actually the first one, the very first one in the Agile Manifesto for Software Development. So, okay, that's good. Individuals interactions are more important than process and tools, but how actually are going to improve the individuals and their interactions? So today I'm going to answer this question because individuals and their interactions are very much connected to how our brains actually function. So a bit of uh, a biology lesson for the human brain. So if you believe in the human evolution, basically in the evolution, uh, then uh, our brain from evolutionary point of view has developed over the past thousands of years, let's say 10, 20, 30, hundred thousand spheres. So the brain itself, that is the current state of our brain, wasn't born like this. It was evolving gradually. And the very first version of our brain is called the reptilian brain or the lizard brain. 
So spoiler alert, we have not just one, but three distinct brains, okay? They work simultaneously together. They are connected, but basically they are kind of three brains. The first one, the oldest brain is the reptilian brain, which is actually working all the time. It's uh, hopefully, thankfully, it's working all the time. It's uh, responsible for uh, our survival to to keep the blood pressure, to keep the heart working, and basically all the things that our body needs to do in order to be alive. So thank you, lizard brain. But it kind of is not good in thinking and uh, being rational. The second brain, so evolutionary speaking, is the mammal brain or the limbic system. This is the brain that is very much emotional. So mammals, they have emotions and uh, this brain is responsible for emotions. And this brain is very strong, stronger in terms of uh, reactions uh, and basically attached emotion to everything that happens to you. And the final version of our brain, brain uh, version 3.0, let's say, is the cortex, which is actually our rational, logical brain. This is where our thoughts come from, real thinking thoughts, our uh, rationale. So there is a catch. The catch is that our cortex demands a lot of energy because it's big. It, it requires a lot of energy and it's not working all the time. So uh, the other brains, the reptilian brain and the limbic brain, they are very in energy efficient. They don't require much energy and they're working all the time and they're super, super, super fast. You don't realize it, but they're many, many, uh, super, super fast. The cortex is slow. Uh, it uh, makes decisions. This is when we use it to, to decide something. Uh, and very, very often... Uh, the three brains, they interact with uh, each other. Uh, and very often, uh, we have certain emotion and our cortex is rationalizing this emotion and making it to seem like a good decision. So I cannot see you and I cannot ask you directly, but think about this. Do you think we are rational, whether we are choosing all the time rationally what we do and how we um, carry on with our lives? I've heard, I've asked this question a lot of uh, on other conferences and some people say yes, some people say no. Uh, actually, the, the answer to that question is that we are all pretty much emotional beasts. The limbic system is way stronger than our rational brain. So the emotions are instant. They are very, very hard to, to predict what emotion you're going to hit. For example, uh, the organizers of uh, this event uh, wrote me in the chat, are you ready? There are 10 seconds, are you going? And I felt like my heartbeat uh, started to rush. Although this is my, I don't know, 100th presentation or something, my heartbeat is still rushing and I cannot control it, it's just happening. Uh, so the emotions are the one that are dictating uh, often our, our choices. And it's kind of self-explanatory, think about it. Uh, if we were purely logical, uh, rational human uh, beings, uh, that would mean that we are going to, uh, no of us is going to smoke because it's bad for our health. No, uh, we are going to all eat healthy, for example, only vegetables and uh, not no junk food or something. We are going to exercise every day because this is the rational thing to do. This is the best thing we should do. And I know that. I'm, for example, not doing this. Uh, we're uh, running on emotions. And our rational brain doesn't understand the emotions and uh, justifies. For example, if you have a decision to, to grab a cake or something, you're rationalizing this decision that was already made, but you're, you, don't, you didn't know it. And it works uh, the other way around. So this is the uh, think about emotions. They are controlling us. Uh, and we need to know this because... Uh, there are some certain stuff that we can do to, to control ourselves, to, to grow our emotional intelligence, is what we call, uh, to, to understand first ourselves, our emotions, and to understand that others are acting in certain ways based on their emotions. Okay, this is very powerful to, to have always in mind. So 
if you if you like to think about it, our the brain structure, uh, you can use the so-called hand model. So there is the hand, and uh, uh, the arm here represents the reptilian brain. Uh, the the thumb, if you put it like this, is like the lizard brain. And if you uh, um, close your fist like this, having the thumbs in, this is your brain. So every time you see a colleague acting uh, aggressively uh, or uh, inappropriately. That means his emotions are so strong that his rational brain is basically flipping. This is what really happens. It's flipping and it's not working because when we have a strong emotion, our rational brain cannot take control of it. So this is the first hint for you. If you are in a situation where you are arguing with somebody who is completely irrational, uh, acting uh, weird, don't try to convince him with some logical arguments or something. Uh, delay the conversation if possible. Say, okay, let's take a break. Let's meet in uh, one day, for example, when the person's emotions are going to be cooled down. Uh, and basically, then his frontal cortex, cortex is going to be again working. Um, it, 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 that's that's uh, uh, important for you to know. Let's uh, review how our brain really functions. So this is a picture, uh, very simplified, of course, uh, of a brain cell. So the brain cell is very interesting, the most interesting in my perspective, uh, cells in our organi organism. Uh, it, it has dendrites. Those dendrites are connecting uh, with other brain cells. They receive signals. Uh, biochemical uh, signals. Uh, it has a nucleus, which is basically the brain of the uh, brain cell. There is the axon. Axon is the uh, like a like a tail. It uh, uh, shoots signal to the axon terminals, and from those axon terminals, neurotransmitters are fired to the other brain cells. So basically the brain cells are not really connected in terms of having a heart connection. They're very, very close to one another, but they are communicating through biochemical hormones and neurotransmitters. So hormones are being released, neurotransmitters are being released, and they are captured by the surrounding brain cells, and they are uh, red, so to speak, and transformed into electrical signals. And this is how actually the brain cells communicate. For example, when I'm talking and you're listening to me, your brains are doing this. So why I'm telling you this, why is this important? Because the different hormones and different neurotransmitters make you behave in a certain way or in a different way. So let's review which are those hormones that we need to there are many, by the way, there are hundreds. I'm not going to talk about all of them. I'm going to just uh, give you an overview of the most important uh, hormones that you need to know uh, and neurotransmitters that you need to know what's happening in other people's brains. So you can, you can actually do practical things to make them release certain hormones and, of course, help them be in a certain mental state. So... Let's review first the bad guys, the so-called bad guys. This is, of course, uh, in a bracket. There are no bad hormones, uh, but uh, uh, the, the hormone cortisol and the hormone adrenaline are responsible when there is a stressful situation. When we are stressed, for example, when I mentioned that uh, the people uh, here in the chat wrote me, you have 10 seconds, are you ready? I've kind of felt stressed and my my body started releasing adrenaline and cortisol, which make me made me feel stressed. Uh, this is a bad thing because stress is basically making you to flip your brain and not think about it and, and to not being rational. Uh, this is also a good thing because when you are, for example, uh, in the forest and you meet a bear in front of you, you need to act really fast. So. Your brain is built to do this. For example, if you're on the street and there is a car that is coming uh, there to hit you, uh, you need to act really fast. That's why the body releases adrenaline, cortisol. Your rational brain is stop, stops working because you don't need 
the 10 uh, ways to fight a bear when this situation happens. You need to act really fast to either run, uh, uh, stay and freeze or fight with the bear, which I personally don't recommend. Anyway, so the, our brain doesn't make a difference whether you're meeting a bear in the forest or you're in a, for example, review meeting and the stakeholder or the manager or the CEO asks you, What's happening with that deadline? Why are you not uh, delivering this? Uh, uh, why this is not working? Uh, what is happening with the test coverage, etc.? We start panicking. We start uh, our brains act, act, acting the same way uh, as it will uh, in, a, in another environment. So have this in mind. The second thing is that psychological safety is a big topic in many organizations, and that's the reason. Because we want people to feel calm, to be able to speak and be themselves openly without any problem, without any issue, uh, feeling uh, somehow uh, badly. So psychological safety is really important. If you're running an organization or a team, if you're a scrum master, agile coach, whatever, manager, uh, make sure people feel safe. So you're not making them release cortisol and, and adrenaline in their brains because then you're basically making your people dumb, right? Uh, when you do this. Now let's talk about uh, about good hormones, uh, good in terms of uh, feeling. Uh, uh, oxytocin is uh, we, we also call it the cuddle hormone. Uh, it is when uh, you hug uh, your loved ones, uh, when you see a baby. Uh, this is when um, you start feeling uh, generous, it makes you be humble, uh, you empathize with others. Actually, this is what I tried to do in the beginning. I'm not sure if I achieved this because I cannot see you, but I hope I did. When I told you about, about picture your childhood and when I told you the story of my childhood, I wanted to make a connection with you. I, I was trying to, to make oxytocin flow in your system so that you are going to perceive me better, to like me better. So this is very important if you're a team leader, Scrum Master, Product Owner, to make people like you, to, to be able to connect with you. And this is how you're going to interact with them better. Not just if you're a leader, with your teammates as well. As well. So if you're hugging uh, people, this is you're going to immediately uh, uh, help them release oxytocin. Of course, if it's weird, not appropriate situation, I, again, don't recommend this, but I think you get the point. Okay, let's go to the next good hormone, which is endorphin. Endorphins are very, very interesting because they are uh, helping us to be focused. They're helping us to be relaxed. And this is what unleashes creativity. It, endorphins are also known to be painkillers. Uh, they help us to be less critical. Uh, they help us to be accepting others ideas how do you help people to uh, release endorphins in their body make jokes be fun that's why i'm trying at least to uh, to, to to make you laugh uh, i am trust i trust you're laughing right now uh, by the way uh, just uh, like a side note there is a comment section uh, add questions there so after i can answer those questions so the organizers here are going to pass them by to me when uh, the time for questions uh, arrives. All right, so let's see how I am now going to try to make your bodies release endorphins. Let's move to the tab, guys, uh, here uh, to the video tab and play a video uh, to, to see what happens when your body is filled with endorphins. You cannot control uh, what you're doing, basically. Let's see. Celebrate Dingus Day. The quirky little rituals include boys sprinkling girls that they fancy with water and the girls striking back with a tap from a pussy willow branch. I'm not going to let you do this one. <laughs> Sorry. That's <clears throat> <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> 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 
<clears throat> it's really so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. This is torture. <clears throat> I just gotta let it out. I just gotta let it out. <clears throat> Okay, let's go back to the slides. So this is what happens, not sure if uh, the, yeah, the slides. Uh, this is what happens uh, when uh, our body is filled with, uh, doesn't matter what kind of hormones. Basically, this is what I meant when your uh, cortex is, is basically not working. It stops working. You cannot control your emotions. Sometimes it's very hard, when, especially when they're strong. So uh, I don't know about you, but every time I watch this video, this is like the thousandth time I've watched it, and it's always making me laugh. Uh, and uh, this is good. If you are uh, making jokes, if you are funny, people are going to feel that way as well. So this is another tip. I'm not sure in what order it is, whether third, fourth, whatever. This is another tip for you. If you want people to behave in a certain way, be the first one to behave in that way. So if you are fun, people are going to feel fun uh, around you. If you uh, are stressed, the opposite, people are all going to be stressed as well around you. So emotional intelligence. Okay, let's uh, go again to uh, review another, uh, another hormone, which is serotonin. Uh, this is responsible to um, our mood control, uh, serotonin serotonin helps us to be positive to be open uh, how can you help others teams whatever to release se serotonin this is when you celebrate success when you praise them for example if you say to the team hey guys you did uh, very well uh, based on your work we uh, achieved uh, this and this result we uh, grew our market share whatever if you give uh, praise, not not just money, but if you give uh, them uh, uh, praise and make them feel proud of themselves, this is how you're going to help them release serotonin, and this is how you're going to uh, basically build your, your teams and people to, to be set for success. Okay, now talking about helping people to become more effective and productive and teams to be effective and productive, um, I trust many of you have heard the term to be in the flow or to be in the zone. If you haven't, I know you've been in a situation, uh, for example, when you're working on some very interesting task and it is occupying your attention and you're in the zone, in the flow, you're super high performing, you're doing the best job you ever. And when you uh, turn around and uh, uh, watch around what, what's happening, you see that a couple of hours have passed by like this and you just felt it was like five minutes or 10 minutes or something like this. This is what means to be in the flow. And we want people and teams to be in their flow zone as longer and as much as possible, right? Because this is how they're going to be more productive. So the question is, how do you do this? First of all, take into account everything I just told you about the hormones and how our brains work. So think about ways how you're going to release in people's brains the good hormones and reduce the bad hormones. How do you do this practically? Well, you need to know this, uh, let's say, graphic. It's a, a very interesting one. Uh, how do you help people to be in their flow zone? If you have this uh, two-dimensional graph graphic here, uh, you can see there is a performance uh, on a, on a uh, y-axis and arousal, which is challenge uh, on the x-axis. And if you give people or if people are dealing with tasks that are uh, below their level, which means they are boring, there are some regular jobs, so very easy tasks, uh, and they're not, there is no much stress to do it. P 
people are basically bored and uh, pretty much underperforming. On the other hand, if you are on the opposite side on the X axis, if you give people not so hard tasks to do, but you give them stress, you give them hard deadlines and you're pushing them, you're micromanaging them. When are you going to be ready? What's happening? What's happening? Basically, what happens is that these people are going to be burning out. Those people are going to be stressed. And again, their performance is going to be significantly lower. I'm not sure about you, but I've seen managers who uh, when C deadlines are coming and we are behind the schedules, they go and they uh, put pressure on people. They put them in stress. And actually, they're doing the opposite of what they are hoping to do to uh, improve people's performance. So what you need to do in order to improve people's performance and help them to be in the state, in the flow, uh, is to be in the uh, the proper proper dimensions between the two things, the, to, to give people tasks that are not too hard for them, but a bit challenging, but also to give them just enough amount of stress or uh, uh, a challenge, we call it a challenge, so they can be in that flow zone. If they're in that flow zone, uh, uh, I mean, if you want to put people easily, easierly to the flow zone, you need to uh, make them release dopamine, noradrenaline, and acetylcholine. Uh, sorry for that. This is, uh, this, uh, these are the hormones that are released when people are in the flow zone. Uh, so dopamine is very much uh, uh, what we are all addicted to. Dopamine is everywhere in sugar, etc. So, of course, not, not all the people are the same. Some people, this is very important, some people are going easier to the uh, to the to the uh, let's say to the flow zone when there is a big challenge we call these people the dopamine junkies those people that for example maybe you have friends that uh, today are uh, skydiving tomorrow they go somewhere else uh, the other day they do something else they're constantly trying new stuff and uh, new things to do uh, and they those people they require a lot of stress a lot of challenge in order to put them in the flow zone other people on the other hand if you even uh, small amounts of stress are capable to push them over the edge and uh, basically uh, push them to be uh, uh, burning out so which of those people do you think uh, are the most Nobel laureates, Nobel Prize winners. Maybe you're thinking the, the first uh, uh, group, but actually it's the second group because the people who are capable to uh, win a, pro, uh, a Nobel Prize to do some breakthrough uh, in science, they do constantly one task all the time uh, to check it again, to check it again, check it again. They're never bored to doing boring stuff. So the other the opposite uh, are the other people. Actually, yesterday I met a person uh, at, a, at, a, at a conference who was explaining to me that he is constantly bored and he has six startups and he's planning to do uh, uh, more startups because he's uh, very much active when he's initiating a startup and uh, trying to be visionary. But he says, I'm super bored when I need to actually execute it and uh, to uh work the whole process i'm just not interested in that and that's the type of the person i'm talking about here okay talking about performance there are two types of thinking our brains when we uh, put people to solve certain tasks there are basically two types of thinking our brains are functioning on two uh, levels the first one is the focused thinking it is very important to uh, to know the difference the focused thinking is when when you're focusing to do a task that is repetitive, that you've done before, you know how to do it, you're focusing and you execute it perfectly. But the focus thinking is awful if you want to uh, be creative, to think something innovative. Think about it. Good ideas, creative innovation ideas, they happen usually 
under the shower or when you're on a walk or when you're talking to friends for something different and suddenly the light, the light bulb uh, fires up and you have some, some idea. Uh, so this is what uh, happens when you're using the other way of thinking, which is diffused thinking. This is when uh, you're not focusing on the task but when you're allowing your brain to not think about anything particular, this is how your brain, your brain cells start fire, start to fire connections that are random connections that you never had before. This is what actually innovation means to have an idea that you never had before. Focus thinking is giving you ideas that you already had, that they're already incorporated in your mind. But diffuse thinking is allowing you to be creative and innovative. So think about this when you want your teams to uh, to, to, to think about something uh, out of the box or something. That's why there are some practice uh, practices like design thinking exercises uh, to, uh, to allow people to change uh, the environment, to go outside, to, to work on another place, uh, et cetera. This is uh, helping the diffuse thinking. So we need both, both uh, ways of thinking if you want to solve different types of tasks, of course. And one killer of performance is the multitasking. Basically, our brains cannot perform multiple tasks all at once. And multitasking is, tasking is killing our focus thinking, not allowing diffuse thinking to happen at all. Uh, so uh, how do you do it? I'm not sure if you have heard about it, but if you haven't, then you can try this technique. It's called Pomodoro technique. It's named after a kitchen uh, timer in the form of tomato, Pomodoro. That's why it's called Pomodoro. How it works, set a timer for 20 or 25 minutes or 15 minutes, whatever works. You can experiment, of course. Shut down all distractions because we are constantly distracted. There are phones. There are chats, messages, emails, uh, social media, all kind of things that are distracting us when we work on something. And when we are distracted, actually, we're losing a lot of brain power. Uh, I don't have the time to talk about this now, but you're losing a lot of brain power. Uh, and uh, it's very bad. So set the timer for, uh, for example, 20 minutes, shut down all the distractions, email chats, and focus on the task that you're currently working on or you want to solve. The goal is not to solve the task in the 20-minute period. The goal is to focus on working on it. When the timer goes off, you stop working on the task and you do a break. You go for a walk. Uh, you Then you can check your messages, uh, whatever. Uh, and you again time that for example 10 minutes you can experiment again maybe five are better maybe six you don't uh, you experiment what, work, what works better and then again set another timer for another uh, portion of uh, 20 minutes this is how you're actually practically combining the two types of thinking focus thinking and diffuse thinking uh, try it it's it, it's working okay let's recap and see if you have questions but basically uh, think about the different hormones and uh, what you need to do, what happens in people's brains so that uh, you can actually influence what's happening in people's brains, what hormones they're influencing, uh, they're producing, which influences their behavior and uh, their ways of working. Let's jump to the q and I was speaking a bit faster because I know I might be running out of time. Uh, are there any questions uh, asking the organizers here? Uh, still no questions. Then I'm going to uh, wait for a bit. Maybe some question would pop up. Uh, and uh, if you want to contact me, of course, you can do it. I'm uh, super approachable on LinkedIn. You can find our website. You can find me on Facebook, uh, although I prefer LinkedIn. Uh, we can discuss this uh, further if you like. Uh, if you have other questions, of course, I'll be happy to answer privately to you. Uh, and of course, now is the time if you want to uh, to ask me something. I really hope it was interest, inter, interesting session for you. Uh, and uh, you learned stuff that you're going to, to try in your environment. How much more time do I have, by the way, uh, for the organizers too?
Okay, I have three more minutes. Okay. Then I'm going to wait for a question to pop up. If you want, uh, if you don't have any question, uh, you can uh, add a feedback if you like the session or not. Uh, organizers are, are asking me if I want to end the session. No, I'm not going to end it. Maybe someone wants to write something. Um, yeah, all the feedback is super welcome. Hope you enjoyed what I have shared today with you. I can ask the organizers whether you like the session. <laughs> Since I can only communicate with you guys. <laughs> they're they are saying that it's a great presentation. Well, I uh, then uh, I'm going to close this session uh, by thanking the organizers first to uh, for inviting me. It was a tremendous pleasure for me to to be here today. I wish you uh, much success uh, with your conference, uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully next year I'll be again the, one of your speakers. Uh, for the others who are still listening to me, uh, it uh, it is a, an honor and first that you decided to spend the time watching me uh, because time is the most uh, valuable resource we all have. And if you uh, chose to, to listen to me, that's uh, uh, very flattering for me and uh, thank you for that. Okay. Uh, then